Hi, my name is Nate, and I have a cellular modem problem. No, I'm just kidding. This is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, I have well over $3,000 of cellular modems here in front of me, and that's only a partial of the amount I have in my house right now for testing. And what a lot of people want to know is Verizon and T-Mobile Home Internet, they want to use their SIM card in a different device, and they don't want to sign up for T-Mobile Business. Well, I'm going to talk about how you actually do that here in this video today. And what I'm going to use in this video is this Chester. I'm going to call it the Chester device, and that's because of where I get it from. I don't really have a better name for it. If I look at the front of it, it says it's a 5G Wi-Fi 6 data access terminal. But we'll get into those specs and exactly uh, what to do with this device. So over here, we have Verizon Home Internet gateway and we have a t-mobile home internet gateway the bottom one there is a sagemcom this top one is the nokia uh, kind of original 5g one i've had that one for like two years now i believe and it's finally going back home to the mothership because i'm uh, tired of paying the 50 bucks a month for it and not really getting my use out of it i'm still paying for a lot of these other ones out here so um you know, I've done lots of videos of how to get around some of their Wi-Fi settings issues, um, adding your own external antennas by getting pigtails. So check out the rest of my channel if you want to see that kind of content out there. Um, and most recently, I've been testing these PEP link devices that I've gotten from Waveform. And they are really good devices. They are high quality. Uh, I do like them. And probably one of the biggest things about PEP link is that they have a... Uh, cloud service, I think they call it um, like IC, Tubus, things like in control. And that's where all of your devices can be managed through a single uh, web interface. And you, there's all kinds of permissions where it's set up for business. And that's where those really do shine. And they um, can offer good speed and, like I said, band locking in there. But you still cannot put a T Mobile home internet SIM in one of these devices, at least not easily. And so, my most liked comment on one of these previous videos was that I was misleading my viewers by saying I figured out how to use a home internet SIM card in these PepLink devices. And I understand where the viewers are coming from. It is true though that, you know, I was showing how you can change the settings in there to get a Verizon home internet SIM card to work. But the T-Mobile home internet SIM card doesn't go in there and it's because T-Mobile does a IMEI lock on their service so that um, you know, an IMEI is kind of like a unique identifier for each device. So this one has an IMEI, this one has a different one, this one has a different one. And what T-Mobile does is they won't let a new IMEI um, get on their network for their home internet. So that means, you know, if you order you get the Sagemcom, that's the only IMEI they will let access the network. Now, there's lots of online chat if you were to go and look that up. As far as what is legal, what's not legal, I won't get into that. I certainly don't suggest anything at all. Um, but I will talk about how I can make um, this all work here with the Chester device. So, for this video, I'm not going to talk about these anymore. If you want to see that, go to my channel. Let's switch over to just this Chester device. And, you know, this is sold by a small shop, really. Uh, I think it's in New York. But um, they really do focus on, I would even say T-Mobile. So looking at this Chester device, you know, it does have a this specific one. I think you can actually configure it a couple different ways on uh, his website for what you can get. But this one has a Cat19 uh, modem in there and it has a MediaTek chipset that it uses and on the back here you can see the four antennas these are the cellular antennas and they all are uh, SMA connectors so you can easily add a external antenna on here and in fact I will do that uh, probably in a future video but then on the side here you have another four antennas and these are for the Wi-Fi signal so you have both 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signals and uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi signals um, coming out of here because it's Wi-Fi 6 and so those ones are also SMA if you wanted to or needed to add an external antenna to that Other than that on the side of it. It has a nano sim card So that's where you would put your sim card a reset button and then in the back you have a WAN port and two LAN ports in there So 
that's you know it's fairly uh, simple device here but it has the key features that a lot of people want as far as the antenna ports all right one thing I do want to mention is how fast this device is this Chester device is you know I'll do another video with a full speed test to show you a lot more details but let me just talk about in general you know this guy has been definitely faster in download than the Arcadian KVD 21 uh, typically it's even like double the download speed uh, at the same time you know so any carrier prior, um, deprioritization and stuff it would be equal between them the upload seems to be pretty good on the KVD and it's pretty hard for me to beat um, with this device so I get similar or a little bit slower upload on this device if I'm on the same bands but I have the ability to switch bands to get to ones that have better upload that I don't have that option on the standard gateway so that's a little hit or miss. Now, I've compared it some to the um, Nokia one before I um, got that one boxed up to ship back, and I was a little bit faster, not crazy faster, uh, until I could get onto some of these SA bands where I, I go up to the third floor and and really um, tune it in to get the best um, 5G aggregation. Then this one started to win again significantly. So. I'll show some tests of that later, as well as using like some waveform external antennas to put those on here and show you what kind of speed difference that provides. All right, so let's go into the web interface of this Chester device and see exactly what types of settings you have, as well as show you uh, some of the tips and tricks here of the device. So once it boots up, the sticker on the bottom tells you the SSID that you connect to. And then you go to 192.168.100.1. And when you do that, you'll probably get a warning message on your browser that says it's not safe. You can click advance and click um, continue so that you can actually log into it here. And this is what you see. So, you know, this is telling me that it is not connected. And that's probably why this top of it is 5G. On the left side here, you can see for network. So it gives you uh, network options that you can go in there and change for, um, you know, how it uh, works for uh, the Internet as well as the wireless uh, settings. And if it aggregates the bands or if it separates the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz for you, you can set up some different things there. You can also, you know, make sure IPv6 is set up. You can do a VPN network where you can go there and set that up in there uh, you can also do uh, zero tier if you uh, wanted to there is quality of service uh, which is also known as QOS that you can uh, set up in here to optimize it and then DDNS and some other things but really probably what most of us are most uh, concerned about is the 5G uh, signal cellular how we can do all the um, tricks with that so this one here you can see it's blank for 5G. It also has some APN settings. You can see here it lists out what my IMEI of this device is. And if it was connected to the network, it would also list a ICC ID. I'm not connected, so it doesn't show that. Um, next here is a network mode. And this is where you start to get interested in the settings. So for the search mode, you can tell it to search for um, you know, 5G. In our, our search for just LTE or do auto, which means it will do um, both and, and try to pick the best one. Same thing for the 5G network mode. Do you want standalone or non-standalone? So non-standalone is what I think all of the T-Mobile gateways are going to connect to. I don't think they're going to connect to um, the standalone um, ones. But with these devices, you can force it to SA, which would be standalone. Or you can leave it in auto, and at least in my experience with this one here, if I have it in auto, it will go to standalone because it's the better um, connection most of the time. Okay, and so next one, here we have a band lock uh, capability. And this is where by any of these check marks that you take off, let's say if I wanted to take off N41 and N71, those are two um, common T-Mobile 5G signals, that means it will not connect to those bands, even if they're available and they're the best ones. Um, and so this is really useful for some people if you have uh, especially a band that seems to be 
a problem child. Like every time you get on to B66 or B12 or, you know, whatever it may be that you notice that your speed uh, stink or your latency really stinks, right in here you can say, you know what, don't connect to that and you can force it off to something else. The other thing is uh, for N41, it typically has lower upload speed than N71 because of the way that um, those different bands are set up between uh, I think it's FDD and TDD. Um, and so N71 is typically a faster upload. So if that's something that you really need or favor, you might want to not use N41. So you can just do that. You hit save and it put it's put into effect um, right away. So this cell lock setting tab, I believe this is how you would do a tower lock. So that PCI number I know is is a common way that you can define your tower and then you can obviously also tell it a band uh, this SCS is I don't even know what that is but perhaps if you do put a comment below I might go in and research that and try to learn that myself but that's what this setting here um, looks like it does TTL um, time to live is the um, is what that acronym stands for you don't actually need to change that for the home internet stuff. I think that stuff can always be um, just the the default setting there. If you were using a data SIM card, uh, like a tablet or a, um, a phone data SIM card, you might need to um, set that TTL to a specific number depending on what your, um, your policy or your plan allows. Okay, so as I was talking, I realized um, not only the reason why I was not getting a signal down here is because I'm in the basement, but also because I have the SIM card out of it for other testing. So let me put the SIM card back in it, and now I should at least get a signal, um, a 4G signal from my booster, and if I'm lucky, I might get a 5G signal. So we'll let that load up here for just a second. All right, so now that I put the SIM card in, which is a, a big help, I do actually um, pick up a signal down here, so that's good. And this shows me um, that I'm actually on band 25. This is probably my biggest complaint with this device is that it's not very clear here actually um, that you are connected to other channels. Now, you can look there at connection typing and see it says NR5G-SA. So this tells me I'm actually connected to 5G standalone here. But if I want to see what other bands I'm connected to, I have to go down to the AT command and I have to type in this uh, short command um, that is AT plus and then QCA, which is um, query carrier aggregation um, info. And then you hit enter. You have to give it a second. There's a spinning wheel down there that um, is spinning and then it shows you what bands you're connected to so here now i can see band 25 and band uh, 41 so this is telling me i'm on both of those 5g bands i have no lte connection on here actually so that is how you get the information and you can also get some different things like um, if you query rsrp then you can figure out um, what your signal is on each of these uh, antenna leads all four of them out there so that might help you if aiming um, several antennas it actually tells you by each antenna um, what type of signal you are getting all right so also on this page you see a IMEI revise uh, field here and you know just for maybe discussion sake let's say that um, this router here um, got corrupted and the IMEI got messed up and the number wasn't good anymore um, and you need to go in there and fix it to make it back correct well this is what you would do you would not have a SIM card in there you would type in what the correct IMEI was supposed to be if it wasn't corrupted and then you would hit uh, edit and then you would uh, after that um, saved you'd unplug the device plug in the SIM card, plug power back up, and you should be all fixed now. Okay, so if I were to keep going here on the security area, there is um, rules that you can add for uh, basically scheduling of different devices based off their MAC address, and you can 
uh, give them start and end times. You can also adjust uh, firewall settings if you wanted um, to do that, including port forwarding. But do note on T-Mobile, you know their CG NAT network it blocks IPv4, um, you know incoming port forwarding options there. So this, even though you set a port forwarding here, it will not work with T-Mobile um, for their port forwarding. Um, but you could use a VPN or have another video out there, which is basically like a re reverse proxy that can give you some port forwarding uh, capabilities, even on the T-Mobile network. And then UPnP, you know, you, again, you can enable that. Um, and then the rest of it is really, um, you know, kind of basic, the maintenance stuff. You can restart. Um, you can set up an auto restart, which, and, you know, this is actually something that, um, I haven't had an issue with it, um, but you know, I've only had it for uh, a week or two, so maybe that's not long enough, but one of the things that people see with these um, gateways is that sometimes it's good to have them restart, either some people daily, sometimes weekly. So that's something that you could set up here if um, you notice that it helps with uh, the network connection. But again, I have not noticed that with this device. Um, you can do some uh, ping uh, detection to, to check your connection to see if it's working well. I guess that um, reminds me of another thing that really these um, non-OE or ISP provided gateways can really provide for you, and that is the DNS server. So that is, um, if you don't know what it does, basically when you go and you know ask for um, let's say google.com or natortaterchannel.com um, the device doesn't know what IP address to go to and so the IP address is what needs to get translated and a DNS server has all those lookups for um, how to get from a URL to an IP so you know where to route the traffic and what I've seen is the, especially the T-Mobile DNS um, auto or default one uh, it seems to be flaky, and sometimes it causes your connections to drop. It causes your devices to say there's no internet, even though there is internet. Actually, it just means that the the DNS server is down. So just jumping back up to that here under the network area under internet, um, that's where you can uh, toggle this manual DNS and type in um, a manual DNS for this stuff. And so something like Cloudflare or Google. Uh, are good ones to use. If you go and um, look them up, there are some different ones. Some of them might maybe try to do ad blocking or uh, specific types of website blocking. So you can look in that and see what um, meets your needs the best. Okay, so that's the main thing for this Chester device. You know, just to go to um, where you can buy this from. You know, this is something that uh, I have a unique coupon code to get you $45 off and free shipping from these devices um, they do have a few different ones you can see here the top ones are really lower end ones they um, have a different web interface and um, different firmware that they run on they run on the open um, WRT firmware and they have uh, I think lower end uh, modems built into them so if you want the fastest speed if you want 5G uh, SA carrier aggregation with multiple uh, bands you really want to go for this you know industrial one that they list here like I said this specific one has a MediaTek the Qualcomm I think is actually a better um, chipset and it should be faster um, but at least at the time when I got this the only thing that was available was the MediaTek one and then this one is the Cat19 uh, RM520N-GL that's a mouthful but that's what is in here. And this is where I will say um, I really enjoyed talking um, to them with their support and knowledge because they've done a lot of testing themselves as well. And they're really helpful with the, the setup. So uh, you can go through here and read some of the stuff. Okay, and so again, you can use my coupon code NaderTater, all one word. Um, that's in like the final step before um, you go to put your um, payment information in. That should give you $45 off of this unit, so it'll make it $550 even. And that is with free shipping. So that's what you can get if you want to mimic this setup. And um, if you have any other questions, please put them down in the comments below. I do read them. 
hopefully I've kept my viewers happier in this one and all the comments will be positive, but we will see how that goes. Thanks for watching as always and take care.